Brooklyn City Council to order. Mary Jo, can you please call the roll? Jackie Pucci. Here. Mary Belvere. She is absent. Kevin Tiansky. Here. Laura Politsky. Here. Ron Van Kirk. Here. Tony DeMarco. Here. Debbie Tomasco. Here. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To start the meeting this evening, we do have some approval of minutes from the meeting held September 26, 2016. I need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. To approve. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tiansky? Yes. Mark Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Good evening, everyone. I apologize for the late start to tonight's meeting. We did have a very lengthy um, um, session in the Finance Committee meeting. We actually started it at 6 o'clock, a half an hour earlier, but still ran, ran over a little bit on time, so I apologize for that. We do have a lengthy agenda tonight, so please bear with me as I read through what we're going to be discussing. We have three grant, re grant requests this evening. Uh, one is for an assistance to firefighters, the other is from the Solid Waste District, and the one is from the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. We also have a request to advertise for bids uh, for the full HVAC maintenance program for all of our city buildings. On the agenda, we still have two items that are held in abeyance. That's Ordinance 2015-77, establishing the full-time position of Economic Development Director, and Ordinance 2016-32, establishing Chapter 1362, Certificate of Inspection at Point of Sale, and amending Section 1360.24, Repair of Code Violations of the Quartified Ordinances of the City of Brooklyn. Resolution 2016-5 is up for a third reading and adoption. However, we are going to endeavor to hold this in advance to our next meeting. And I believe Mrs. Pucci will explain that in her report for finance. But that's declaring City Council's intent to vacate a portion of Montgomery Place South of Manoa Avenue and requiring others to be published and declaring emergency. On second reading this evening is Resolution 2016-10, supporting the efforts of Utility Workers of America Local 270 to reinstate First Energy's health care cost sharing for active members and retirees. Ordinance 2016-63 is up for third reading and adoption. This is authorizing the purchase of an access control system for the Navatorium and the John M. Coyne Recreation Center from Integrated Creative Precision Systems for $17,504.54 with the State of Ohio government pricing. Ordinance 2016-68 is up for second reading. This is authorizing a purchase and service agreement between the City of Brooklyn and Bailey Communications Incorporated for a new voiceover IP phone system in full service five-year maintenance agreement in the amount of $181,506.93. New on our agenda this evening is resolution 2016-11. This is up for first reading. is authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the District Board of Health of Cuyahoga County for health services for year 2017 for $46,016. Resolution 2016-12 is accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county fiscal officer we intend to pass this by emergency this evening. Up for first reading is Ordinance 2016-70 is the amended annual appropriations for this year. Ordinance 2016-71 is also on first reading. is authorizing the mayor of the city of Brooklyn to pay an incentive to employees able to opt out of medical coverage under the city's medical plan. Ordinance 2016-72 authorizes the mayor to enter into a comprehensive consultant, consulting and brokered services agreement with Oswald Companies uh, this, is for our, this is for our health insurance with Medical Mutual, and we're endeavoring to pass this by emergency as well. Ordinance 2016-73 is authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Software Solutions Incorporated to provide accounting and software system and upgrade for the finance and payroll departments. Ordinance 2016-74 is amending Ordinance 2016-54, which was the authorization to purchase of a snow and ice removal package for installation of a new 2017 International Truck from Leadhill Road Machinery for $47,713.35, the State of Ohio government pricing, and we're going to add to that $700 that was missed um, by that company in the original quote. We will pass this by emergency this evening. Ordinance 2016-75 is authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement between the City of Brooklyn and Outfront Media Incorporated to lease the property known as Medina Freeway, Freeway Property City of Brooklyn Permanent Parcel 431-09-05, 
for the purpose of installing and maintaining advertising signs. And these are the, uh, the billboards you see on 71 that are located in the city of Brooklyn. Uh, ordinance 2016-76 is authorizing a change order for additional inspection and testing services to the Tiedemann Road Project, uh, PID 95548 by quality control inspection in the amount of $85,367. And this is in regards to the project that's uh, taking place up on Tiedemann Road by 480. And we endeavor to pass this by emergency night as well. That is our agenda for this evening. We will now proceed with our council meeting. At this time, we'll have the public session. If anyone in the audience has anything to say for the good and well for the city of Brooklyn, please step forward, state your name, address, including city, and you will be recognized. Please remember to keep your comments to five minutes or fewer. Good evening, everyone. My name is Victor Ardito, 7439 Outlook Avenue, Brooklyn. I'd like to bring up, you know, the, the budgets are tight, you know, American Greetings is gone. Um, a lot of people, nobody really shows up at these meetings, but we just spent 20 some thousand dollars voted for Time Warner to install a cable. You know, some of these people might want to find things out and come on down to the meetings. I mean, again, it's 20 some thousand dollars, not a drop in the bucket, not for me or anybody. And the city's at a crisis, and you just brought up you're spending eighty-five thousand dollars more on Tiedemann Road. I have friends I know, and uh, you know I'm called cheap at times, and I'll admit it. I'd like to retire sometime before I die. And they'll be in the store, and they go, "Oh, it's only a dollar more." Well, again, it's only a dollar more. It adds up. Ten times, it's ten dollars. It adds up. You know, and our health care problem, going back to health care, and now uh, the uh, the the. Uh, presidency going on. Now everybody is uh, going to have free college if you make under, I think it's $120,000, they want to pass free college. What they haven't noticed, or said a lot heavily, is they're going to pay, the states are going to be responsible to figure out how to come up with that money. And I'm figuring that's going to be our taxes again. But college is going to be free for a lot of people, while the rest of us are going to be struggling to pay taxes, especially if you're retired. I mean, there's a long shot to this, you know, to me, shooting yourself in the foot. I'd like to have all everything taken care of, but it's not a perfect world. But we keep uh, keep spending when it's not there. And, you know, health care again, back to that circle. It's it's going crazy. And again, at the convention, at the convention, but when they were talking the other night, political Donald and, uh, you know, Clinton, Back to there and how much it's costing and how much it's going up and everybody says, yeah, we're going to fix it. Yeah, you're, you're going to raise taxes or you start over and do it right because too many companies are backing out. And again, money's not endless. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you. We will now move on with our reports of committees, commissions, and boards. And this evening, we will start with our Finance Committee, Councilwoman Pucci. Thank you. Good evening. As Mr. Van Kirk mentioned, we did start our Finance Committee meeting earlier at 6 o'clock this evening. We had a presentation on exploring the possibility of solar panels down at our landfill. So um, I, too, apologize for running over a few minutes. Um, we addressed the following pieces of legislation in the um, Finance Committee meeting. We recommended approving all three grant requests, which are uh, one from the firefighters, uh, excuse me, the fire chief assistance to firefighters grant in the amount of $100,000. If we do receive this grant, there'll be a match of up to $5,000. Um, the second grant request we approved was to the county solid waste district. This is actually a mini grant just for $500 and this can only be used for some banners and table skirts to promote recycling. And a uh, grant application to the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District, and um, these are funds that are now available to municipalities for to address um, problems with the sewers and uh, stormwater, and um, we will be addressing the situation with um, the sewers on Rodon. Uh, next, we approved the request to advertise for bids for the full HVAC maintenance program for all city buildings. Under legislation, first was Resolution 2016-8, 
this relates to Montgomery Place. This was held in abeyance from our first meeting in uh, September. Mr. Butler has met with um, the involved parties and has requested that we hold this in abeyance to our next meeting, which is October 24th, and that will give him a chance to um, finalize the details of the agreement and be able to get them in writing. Next is up for third reading and adoption 2016-63 authorizing the purchase of the access control system for the natatorium and the John M. Coyne Recreation Center from Integrated Precision Systems Incorporated for $17,504.54 through the State of Ohio government pricing and this was included in our capital budget at the beginning of the year. On second reading is um, authorizing the purchase and service agreement between the City of Brooklyn and Bailey Communications for a new phone system and a full five-year service maintenance agreement. Um, this amount will come down at the last meeting. Mr. DeMarco suggested that the vendor take a look at the necessity on the phones, um, realizing that we probably do not need every single phone station to have all the bells and whistles so they took a look at it and we will have an amendment at the next meeting with a cost reduction um, on first reading this evening is ordinance excuse me resolution 2016-11 authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the district board of health of Cuyahoga County for Health Services for the year 2017. The total on this is $46,016. It represents a 5% increase. The per capita rate for the past three years for our contract was $3.92 per resident. Our new per capita rate is $4.12. Resolution 2016-12, which will be passing by emergency this evening, accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county. This is the final step in our collection of property taxes. We first submitted our tax budget to the County Budget Commission back in July. They review it, approve it, then it comes back to us tonight for final approval and there is no change in our property tax rate, still at the 5.9 mills. Ordinance 2016-70, which is on first reading, our amended appropriations. Um, there are various changes. I'll read through them into the record on the final reading. If anyone would like to see this before, they can contact City Hall to get a copy of the exhibit. The net change to the general fund is an increase of $837,711. The net change to our other funds is an increase of $339,093. The total increase for all funds is $1,176,750. So our total amended appropriations uh, brings it up to $23,263,664. Uh, ordinance 2016-71, which is on first reading, authorizing the mayor of the city of Brooklyn to pay an incentive to employees um, able to opt out of medical coverage under the city's medical plan. The reason for this legislation is uh, there's um, new IRS regulations that govern these type of offerings to employees and um, we pay them a 25% of the premium if employees opt out of coverage. Ordinance 2016-72, which will be passing by emergency measure, authorizing the mayor to enter into a comprehensive consulting and brokerage service agreements with Oswald companies. This also relates to our uh, health care. Our previous broker was paid through the renewal with Medical Mutual. So, um, and that was about $39,480. So, we'll be paying this directly to the consultant and this is less and we will receive more benefits through this company. Ordinance 2016-73, which is on first reading, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Software Solutions to provide an accounting and software system and upgrade for the finance and payroll departments. Um, we did look at this uh, last year. Um, I was um, fortunate to be able to participate in um, the explanation and demonstrations of this enhanced system and I would like to thank uh, Mr. Schaefer for moving on this. As I mentioned in the Finance Committee meeting, this was one of the first things I mentioned to him when we sat down and talked after he started. Um, this will benefit all departments by streamlining things and making our processes more efficient. And we will also be able to access more customized reporting. 
Um, the total price is $97,000, and they're allowing us to pay for this in four installments over four years without any additional charge. Ordinance 2016-74, which will be passing by emergency measure, authorizing the purchase of the snow and ice removal package for the installation of a new 2017 international truck. Um, we're just adding the $700 for the heater and defroster in this um, vehicle, which uh, the vendor had left that off their original proposal. Ordinance 2016-75, authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease agreement between uh, the City of Brooklyn and Outfront Media. Um, this is to lease the property known as the Medina Freeway in the City of Brooklyn, permanent parcel 430905, for the purchase of installing and maintaining advertising signs. These are the billboards that are on the city property as you travel along I-71. Um, this is only up for first reading this evening. And finally, Ordinance 2016-76 will be passing by emergency measure, authorizing a change order for additional inspection and testing services to the Tiedemann Road Project, uh, PID 95548, by Quality Control Inspection Incorporated in the amount of $85,367. Um, the original contract specified night and weekend work only. This was later modified. <coughs> However, this modification resulted in an increase for our construction manager because they had to provide more personnel. Um, we do have a lot of questions on this. Mr. Verb advised that they are having a meeting to discuss um, this and the uh, remaining uh, uh, progress on the progress on the project, I should say. Um, we're obviously not happy about having to pay this additional money, but if we don't pass this this evening, the construction project over there will come to a halt because they would have exhausted their original contract with us. So um, I believe that completes my report. Um, I can announce this evening that our next finance committee meeting will also begin early at 6 p.m. Chief, Chief Zemek has asked for some time for a presentation on joining forces with our other partners at the Parma Regional Dispatch to apply for a grant. And I believe that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. Uh, next up is the Public Safety and Environmental Committee, Councilwoman Tomasco. Good evening. Um, just wanted to remind people that tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, October 12th at 6 p.m., we'll be having a Public Safety and Environmental meeting. Um, the uh, <clears throat> main topics to be covered will have um, the Law Director, Mr. Butler, will be doing a presentation on the new marijuana law and um, what the state is doing to implement it. I know they've appointed a committee that I think is taking actually a couple of years to look into things. But anyway, Mr. Butler will be presenting that. So people are free to come and ask their questions and understand better um, what this new marijuana law means. Um, and also we've had a, a lot of requests to talk about um, street parking. Um, everything from commercial vehicles being parked on the street to cars why do we have a snow ban and cars can't park during the snow ban um discussion about can we do away with car parking on the street on trash day because some people haven't had their trash picked up because there's been too many cars on the street so we're going to talk about cars on the street parking uh tomorrow at this meeting as well and then i would like to begin the discussion on uh some of the animal issues um looking at the uh animal shelter expenditures etc how much uh, how many dogs we actually take care of um etc but i i think we might run out of a little bit of time tomorrow so i'll probably have to carry that over to the next safety meeting um and the comment that at the last council meeting um miss carol yanico came and asked about uh heroin it you see a lot of the ads and you hear a lot and read it in the paper about it it's a growing problem in the state of ohio and she asked um, if we could talk a little bit about that at a safety meeting. Um, how big of an issue is it here in Brooklyn and what is our response to it? So we will be putting that on the agenda for the next safety meeting. And I'll also comment, as always, if you have any safety or environmental issues pertaining to police, fire, or any other um, environmental issues in the city or safety issues, shoot me an email or give me a call and. Um, we'll make sure we get them on future agendas and that's all i have so please come and join us if you're able to tomorrow at 6 p.m and it'll be over in the conference room thank you 
Thanks, Mr. Musco. Next up is Domestic Abuse Commission, Councilwoman Belitsky. Thank you. Um, this is new information that I got within the past few hours, and I'll give you more information on it at a later date. But the Domestic Violence and Child Advocacy Center has just been awarded $1,440,000 from the Victims of Crime Program administered by the Attorney General of the State of Ohio. This will increase programs for victims of domestic violence, and I will follow up at a later date. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. Polinsky. Next up is the Board of Zoning Appeals, and that goes to Commissioner Colson. Thank you, Mr. Franker. The Board of Zoning Appeals uh, has a meeting scheduled for Thursday, October 20th, 6 p.m. here in Brooklyn City Hall Conference Room. Uh, first request that we'll hear is one from Be Next Awning and Graphics for an additional freestanding sign for St. Elias Church at 8023 Memphis Avenue. Uh, second request is from Henry Frederick for 22 inch height variance for a fence in a side yard adjacent and parallel to neighboring home at 4784 Forest Edge. A request from Bert Edwards, intermodal one for a parking uh, setbacks variance, a front setback variance of 12 foot six, east side of 10 foot, west side of eight foot six, at 8215 uh, Clinton Road. This is for a new parking lot that was uh, previously approved to Planning Commission. Uh, request from Bird Edwards, Intermodal 1 for 22.5% uh, minimum lawn landscape area variance at 8215 Clinton Road. Uh, request from Andrew Clark for a 35 square foot variance to the maximum size for a, sheet, a steel shipping container shed at 10407 Bidoff Road. And then under old business, there will be a request from Sean, Sean McGrath to amend approval of docket 12-2015-01 for a 180 square foot steel shipping container shed at 10401 Bidoff Road. Uh, as always, uh, anybody can have the right to comment at the meetings in person or in writing, and feel free to call the building department with any questions. Thank you, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Colsar. Next up is the Recreation Board, Councilman Tansky. Thank you. The next Recreation Board meeting will be held on Monday, October 17th in the Rec Center meeting room. 7 p.m. That concludes my report. All right, thank you, sir. Then the last uh, report this evening comes from Council Pucci for the Planning Commission. Thank you. The Planning Commission met on Thursday, October 6 at 6 p.m. in the conference room at City Hall. We approved the minutes from the August 4th meeting. However, there was not a quorum present at that meeting to approve the minutes from September 1st. Mr. Polidori, though, did um, read into the record some corrections, so those minutes will be amended. Uh, there was a request from Agile Sign Ohio for an internally illuminated LED channel letter wall sign at 4662 Ridge Road, permanent parcel 4330704. This is the nail place um, over uh, next to Knight Commons. Um, near the intersection of Ridge and Bidoff, and we did approve that. Second, a request from B Next Awnings and Graphics for an internally illuminated LED freestanding sign at 8023 Memphis Avenue, permanent parcel 4322410. Uh, this is for St. Elias. We did approve that request as well, and uh, it does require some variances, so they are going to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Under old business, we had two items, a request from Dumpstar Dumpsters for conditional use for outdoor storage of construction equipment at 11050 Memphis Avenue, permanent parcel 4310703. This was deferred from the September 1st, 2016 meeting. Uh, once again, there was no representative from this company, and we did vote to deny their request. Uh, the final piece of, uh, or the final request we 
uh, approved was a request from Bert Edwards of Intermodal 1 LLC to construct an additional parking lot located at 8515 Clinton Road, permanent parcels 4311402 and 4313048, deferred from December 16, 2005 and January 7th, 2016. And we did approve that. There are some variances required, so they also will go to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. And I did want to follow up. Did we make any progress, Mr. Kosar, on the situation with the standpipe down there? Uh, my understanding is that uh, it just the agreement is made and just needs to be signed. Okay. Um, we had a discussion about it this morning, and. Okay. Get that going soon. So any, anything we can do to speed that along, I know that this uh, business owner and resident would really appreciate. And that completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. Um, I said that was the last one, but I forgot about mine. Um, the um, school board did meet on Wednesday, September the 28th, to discuss the recently released report card uh, that was um, released. Um, you may have seen that in the paper about the report card. Uh, there was a lengthy discussion about it. Um, they, one of the reasons they gave for Brooklyn's uh, not so great showing for this is that they have changed those tests three times since 2013 and of course they are working to obviously see those scores improve. Uh, they also uh, made mention that the collection rate for the property taxes increased from 91 to 95 percent um, this year. Uh, the next school board meeting will be held on Tuesday this next Tuesday October the 18th at 6 p.m. It's held in the media center um, in the new uh, wing of the school over there um, off of Bidoff. I would encourage residents to, to attend that. Um, the last couple school board, meetings, school board meetings that I've been to have been very sparsely populated. And so I would encourage residents to please come out and to come to the school board meetings. They go over a lot of information. And obviously this is our school system, our tax dollars pay for it. So we wanna make sure um, that your, your voice is heard and you know what's going on in the schools. With that, we will now move on with the uh, reports of council. And this evening we begin with Mrs. Pucci. Thank you. Um, just two brief things. Um, first, I'm uh, unable to attend the safety committee meeting tomorrow because I have to work. So um, anything you could provide me, Mr. Butler, on your presentation, I'd appreciate. And um, regarding the medical marijuana, I have um, just a couple pieces of information. Um, I know that there are some people who may have questions on this. There is going to be a program this Thursday, October 13th from 7 to 8.30 at the Parma Snow Branch of Cuyahoga County Public Library, which is at 2121 Snow Road. Um, basically, they're going to have some panelists and a moderator um, explaining what they know up until this point. And um, it sounds like it is going to be very informative for anyone who is interested. The panelists are Senator, State Senator Kenny Yuko, uh, Dr. Brian uh, Batchelder, who's president of the Ohio State Medical Association, uh, Garrett Fortune, who's CEO of um, Funk SAC, which makes complement packaging for the cannabis industry, and Thomas G. Heron, who's an attorney. Um, so anyone who's interested, there is a program. Um, the sponsors are Case Western Reserve, Siegel Lifeline, Lifelong Learning Program, the League of Women Voters of Greater Cleveland, the Plain Dealer, Cleveland.com, and the Lakewood and Cuyahoga County Public Library Systems. There is a corporate sponsor, First Interstate Properties. And I know, um, doing a little bit of reading on it, because I know that we're going to have to eventually um, make some decisions on how we're going to address it for our city here in Brooklyn. And um, one of the things I have come across is, um, well, we do have a six-month moratorium in our city, but it seems like um, that there probably is not going to be anything in place anytime soon. So um, we'll have to look at whether we're going to extend our moratorium or how we're going to handle it. I, I know that they don't want cities right off the bat to have a negative view of it and, you know, without finding out the facts, just say no, um, which, which we do have the right to do. And another thing I've stumbled upon is that because they're in the process of writing these regulations, so literally they're starting from scratch, if there are people in the community, whether it's residents, lawmakers, you know, mayors, law directors, whoever, if there are any concerns or questions that people feel should be addressed as these regulations are being developed, 
they do want to hear from people. So that is just something to keep in mind. Um, the Brooklyn Community Improvement Corporation met last Wednesday at 5.30, and the purpose of the meeting was to select a developer as our partner as we explore the city center concept. And we did uh, vote to select Geis as the uh, partner, development partner. Um, I was not able to attend because I was at work, but I was able to give my proxy to uh, Mr. DeMarco, who attended the meeting in my absence. And um, there will be more information coming before council on this. That completes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Pucci. Next up is Councilman Tansky. Thank you. Good evening. I would like to thank all the residents and their families who came out to the Brooklyn Fall Festival on Saturday. There was plenty of good food, hay rides, and fun for the kids, and great music by the Breakfast Club. I would also like to thank Mayor Katie Gallagher and staff who did an awesome job in putting together this wonderful event. I hope everyone who came out had a great time, and I hope to, this, to do this fun-filled event, event again next year. Council met with county officials on the issue of solar panels potentially being placed in our city landfill as a great energy savings. The use of solar energy could actually power our buildings such as city garage and the recreation center. It could also be stored, <clears throat> could also be stored to be sold at a later time. I've been a strong supporter along with the sustainability committee and the use of sustainable, sustainability energy for many years. This is a great opportunity for our city to save thousands of tax dollars that will, be, that will be needed to cover a percentage of our future tax losses. We must continue these efforts by thinking outside the box and finding ways to reduce cost as we start to feel the impact of losing American greetings. Sustainable energy is the way of the future. City Council and the Sustainability Committee needs to continue to look at other energy savings and support new ideas of saving the city money. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Tansky. Next up is Mrs. Politsky. Good evening, thank you. I also hope that many residents who had the opportunity to come enjoy the fall festival last Saturday. Families with young children were everywhere, and I think they all had a good time. Many people were walking friendly dogs. It really adds to the atmosphere, so I'm very glad that we allow them in the park now. In the evening, the band was awesome, and the adults were dancing and swaying to the music. I attended the first Black Watch meeting on September 27th. Sergeants Knapp and Eschweiler conducted the meeting. Resident Tim Zellers is the resident who spearheaded this idea. Jill Ludwig is the contact person at City Hall, and she can fill you in on the details and sign you up if you want to be part of this program. Also a reminder to Medicare beneficiaries, you must decide on whether you stay with your Medicare supplement plan or make a change between October 15th and December 7th, 2016 for your 2017 benefit year. Appointments from an OSHIP certified volunteer are available at the Senior Center. Don't miss out, sign up early. Call 216-635 4222 to make an appointment. And that ends my report. Thank you. Next up is Mr. DeMarco. Uh, I have no report this evening, but I did want to mention that uh, all of council will be uh, being presented a financial overview this evening after the council meeting by our finance director. So I look forward to uh, reviewing the information. And that's all I have. Next up is Mr. go. Good evening again. Um, just a couple of items. First, I wanted to respond to Ms. Pusey's comments about um, the marijuana meeting. Unfortunately, I'm going to be at the High School Hall of Fame dinner that evening, so I won't be able to attend. But the names that she read are the some of the people that um, the governor appointed to a marijuana task force to study this further. And in the reading I've been doing, I think they have almost up to two years to come back with recommendations. So. Again, there isn't anything necessarily imminent happening in this, um, but it seems like they have a good cross-section of people and they'll uh, be doing a lot of uh, study, so it's not too late again to uh, get your comments and feedback to them. Um, I also, Ms. Pusey has commented a couple of times now at the meetings about 
the city center project and the new thing that we're looking at and I too am a member of the CIC committee and we talked about um, the fact that we chose Geis as a developer that we're going to study this concept further. I just wanted to comment to people that we're going to be having many, many meetings to communicate with residents and other stakeholders in the city as to what this project is, what it is we're considering, how it might be financed, et cetera, before we move forward with anything. We're in very preliminary planning stages on this with a developer. Um, it has the potential to be quite exciting for the future of Brooklyn, but don't worry, we're not rushing into anything without uh, including the uh, members of, clearly, the uh, residents of the city. Um, I wanted to echo the comment on the fall festival. We were blessed with incredible weather this year. Um, I went up uh, twice. I actually went up the first time and roamed around a little bit and had a very nice time. And then um, I went back with my pooch, and he, uh, he didn't want to come home. I tried to take him in the car, and he didn't want to jump in the car. But it was a great, um, really great team effort. It looked like we had very good attendance. And um, it was one of the things when we did the marketing project a couple of years ago, one of the things that the residents fed back to us was they wanted to see more city type events like that. Now, I don't remember in any meetings discussing the cost of this or going forward with it, but having attended it, it was quite a nice event and certainly better than last year when it rained. So God bless for the weather. Um, I also wanted to thank the department heads um, for reporting out at these uh, council meetings. I'll just comment that um, they've always come to the meetings, but they haven't always made reports. And I asked if they could please try to do that more, and the mayor clearly supported that idea. And I've had a lot of feedback from residents that they really appreciate knowing what's going on. Um, particularly the people, you know, I'm sure Mr. Verba with the uh, people driving on Memphis and Tiedemann want to know what's going on. But for all the city things, I really appreciate them giving updates on what's happening in the city. And that kind of echoes into what Mr. Ardito said. I applaud those of you that come to these council meetings. I applaud those of you that watch from home. I hope with the addition of the last channel, we can have more people watching these meetings. Um, and we really need, um, the way our government is structured, we need more people like Mr. Ardito who take the time to become involved in the government and understand what it is that they're doing. Um, because that's clearly uh, one of the principles behind our government. I'll also make a comment for people that a lot of the discussion that goes on in terms of what we're spending money on happens at the finance meeting, which happens generally at 6 o'clock before the council meeting. So, so many of the things that in a council meeting just kind of get read through very quickly, and Ms. Pusey tries to explain as much as possible, you know, what the expenditure is for, but the discussion around that, where council really has an opportunity to ask questions and, and uh, discuss it, happens at the finance meeting that happens before the council meeting. And people are welcome to attend that as well. So if you really want to get into the finances of the city, um, that's a good meeting to uh, attend. And I also echo Mr. DeMarco's comment. I'm looking forward to uh, having us start to take a look at the overall finances of the city and take a more global view on where exactly we're spending money and what our future monetary situation looks like. Um, the last thing I just wanted to comment, and I think at the last couple of meetings, I've been a salesperson here for the Brooklyn High School Hall of Fame dinner. It's finally going to happen this Thursday night. Um, I just wanted to comment, I'd like to thank um, Ms. Pusey, uh, Ms. Valbeer, and Mr. DeMarco, and the mayor who purchased tickets to attend the dinner. And the mayor is also doing proclamations to recognize the inductees. So it should be a very nice evening. We have 110 people coming. So it should be a very nice evening. And I also wanted to give a thanks, a shout out to Tom over at the Brooklyn Historical Society. Um, he's got a, he did a PowerPoint presentation of the history of the schools, you know, when Rhode Island was first built, when the high school was first built, and showing through the progress of the schools. And then the um, high school has a PowerPoint presentation of the building of the new school, and the additions, and how that looks. So we're going to merge the two and have that running during the uh, cocktail hour on Thursday night. 
and also we're going to give that same presentation back to the historical society so that they now have a uh, presentation that will go through literally the history of the Brooklyn schools, the buildings. Um, you know, what buildings were first built, when they were knocked down, and what the new building looks like. Because I know many people have not been able to tour the new building. It will be on a PowerPoint presentation available at the Historical Society. So again, I thank Tom for uh, doing that. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Muska. Just very briefly, um, I want to thank the mayor as well, those that support for the Fall Fest. I was not able to attend this year. I was actually in Washington, D.C. Uh, with a group from uh, the school that I teach at. You know, so I was not, not able to attend, uh, but I was able to, even though last year in the rain, it was a great time. So I'm assuming with the, with the nice weather, everyone had a good time as well. And the folks that I've talked to did enjoy it. So kudos to all involved there. Um, just to address a couple things that Mr. Odito said, I, I do agree with you on the expenditure for the cable line. That's why I voted against it. Um, but obviously there's more than just me up here. So that's how it works. It was voted down six to one. Um, as far as the project on Tiedemann Road, we actually did have a brief discussion about that in the finance meeting. We were running out of time. And, um, and this is an ongoing process. In order, to, if, if we don't approve this, the construction project stops. And obviously we can't have that. As Mr. Verba mentioned, and he'll explain some things later on as we go along, there are ways to try to, to get the, those funds reduced that we owe for this. Uh, but we need to keep the, obviously keep that project moving. We can't have it come to a stop. And unfortunately, we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place on that in that situation. And as far as the, the college issue, I agree with you. Nothing is free. Uh, in life it's everything the government offers is paid for by the taxpayers and so there's nothing there's nothing that is free and so you are exactly right when you talk about that it's, it's the taxpayers are gonna have to pay for it all right and uh, that's all i have this evening we're now move on with the mayor's report thank you mr banker i just have a couple announcements so we received a certificate of recognition from the city of cleveland for Brooklyn's assistance in the RNC, we actually only really had one officer assist on the task force, task force for the RNC for those four days, uh, but it was nice for them to recognize the city of Brooklyn. Uh, as many of you know, we're part of the Heritage Home Program. The city of Brooklyn pays a nominal fee, and what the Heritage Home Program offers is uh, technical assistance if you're looking to do any construction in your home. Uh, we've had a huge upswing in people participating uh, this year, uh, $405,000 in technical assistance, uh, $377,000 in site visits, uh, $10,000 in loans pending, and only uh, actual one loan denied. So two people applied, one people proceed the loan. If you want to have uh, receive more information on this, you can go to www.clevelandrestoration.org. And it's also on the city's website. So if you're looking to make a renovation, uh, please check that out. Uh, Big Creek Connects is having a hike in the Oxbow on October 16th at 10, 10 a.m. Uh, you can meet behind the Brooklyn Fire Station if you're interested. The Kaiga Soil and Water Conservation District is doing a native plant garden. And so they're having a presentation for anyone interested in coming. It's Wednesday, October 12th in Night Commons at 4 p.m. And then they'll be installing the garden at 4.30 p.m. They took uh, some grant proceeds and uh, they're going to do this nice garden in our park. So that's great for the community. As everyone mentioned, Fall Festival turned out to be a great day. I just wanted to reiterate uh, some of our sponsors. Our Gold Leaf sponsors, uh, the Brooklyn Chamber of Commerce and Cleveland Clinic, our Red Leaf sponsors for the event, Bridge Park Square and Buffalo Wild Wings. Um, we had so many volunteers who helped and all the community groups uh, in the city of Brooklyn were out there. It was, it was just such a great presence. I also want to thank Giant Eagle who came in and donated pop and water. Uh, the Cleveland Water Department who brought their water truck and they were giving out free water bottles. Uh, Metro Health who was coming to do uh, some different vitals for people free. Our straw and our bricks were donated by Lowe's. Home Depot was out there with the kids doing um, some building projects and it was a great hit. It was one of our most popular uh, events there for the kids. Polaris Career Center was out there giving free pastries. Um, and you know, overall it was just such a great day so I want to thank everyone involved. Uh, Coffee with the Mayor is this Friday at 9 a.m. We'll have all the directors present. Uh, if you're interested in coming, Dr. Gladcock will also be there. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And we'll now move on to the director's reports. This evening, we'll start with the uh, recreation manager, Ms. McGinty. Good evening. We are now a Silver and Fit provider. Silver and Fit is a program designed for older adults. 
To find out if you are eligible, you can log into www.silverandfit.com or call their customer service hotline at 1-877-427-4788. Or you can stop in at the Recreation Center during um, regular business hours and we can check if you're eligible. That concludes my report. Thank you. Next up is Finance, and that was Finance Director Schaefer. Good evening. I just wanted to reiterate that the 2015 CAFR is still under review by the Auditor of State. Once it's public, re publicly released, we will be able to send it out to everybody. Um, I know I sound like a broken record every Tuesday, Thursday, I go, th go out there and check to see if it's been publicly released. Um, hopefully, over the next few weeks, it'll be available. Um, I will reiterate, we had a lot of, lot of items on the agenda for the Finance Committee meeting. We will be putting something on there over the next couple meetings for the ABG Needs Assessment uh, to be able to present that to Council. Um, and we will be having a financial overview uh, with a Council work session after this. And City Administration is going to be meeting with the City employees to share a similar financial overview this Friday, the 14th at 2 p.m. here in Council Chambers. And uh, we've also scheduled another health care committee meeting for the following Friday after this one on uh, October 21st. And that, com that concludes my report. Excuse me, Mr. Bancroft, may I ask a question? Um, did you say regarding the needs assessment that we're not going to get that this evening, that that's something we're going to get further into the future? Correct. That's when AVG will be coming in here to actually do a, a, a full-blown blown presentation of the needs assessment for each one of the buildings that they performed. Okay. I think it would be helpful if we would have a copy of the needs assessment prior to that so that we could be prepared with questions. May I be recognized? Uh, right now, uh, Mr. Verba has been going through, along with all the directors, their deadline to submit changes to Mr. Verba is this Friday. We'll go back to ABG to make those changes and then you'll receive a finalized copy. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schaefer. Uh, next up is our Fire Chief, Chief Zemeck. Thank you. I just wanted to remind all the residents that this Saturday the Fire Department will be conducting an open house from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thanks. Okay. We'll now move on with our agenda items this evening. Uh, we start off with grant requests. We have three of them. I have a memo here from uh, Chief Zemeck. I am requesting permission to apply for a grant through the Assistance to Firefighters Grant Program. The grant will be for firefighting equipment not to exceed $100,000. If awarded, the city's share will be 5% of the award amount, which would not exceed $5,000. Move to authorize the grant application. Second. To authorize, Kathy Pucci. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Mm -hmm. Barb Politsky. Yes. Ryan Baker. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Debbie Tomasco. Yes. Next is regar regarding the Cuyahoga County Solid Waste District, a 2016 mini grant. Uh, members of council, I respectfully request authorization to apply for a CCSWD mini grant of $500 to purchase two banners and table skirts for promoting recycling. There is no match required. This comes from our service director, Mr. Verba. Move to authorize applying for the mini grant. Second. To authorize, Kathy Pucci. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Barb Politsky. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Debbie Tomasco. Yes. The last grant is coming from a mayor. The mayor would like to apply for a member community infrastructure program. This is a 25% match, and the administration would like to use this for the sanitary portion of Road on Road and alley reconstruction. The engineer, service director, and mayor had a pre-planning meeting with NEORSD, who believes this would be a solid application request. NEORSD would also allow the city to use the county assessment fund and the stormwater sewer fund as part of our 25% match. This grant will be renewed each year until 2021. Move to authorize the application. Second. To authorize, Kathy Pucci. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Art Politsky. Yes. Ryan Van Kirk. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Debbie Tomasco. Yes. Next, we have a request to advertise for bids. This it comes from our service director, Verba, as well. Members of council, I respectfully request authorization to advertise for bids for a full maintenance surface program, which will include heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems at City Hall the Senior Center, the Service Garage, the Animal Shelter, the Historical Society, and the Fire Department. Move to authorize advertising for bids. Second. To authorize, Kathy Pucci. Yes. Kevin Tansky. Yes. Barb Politsky. Yes. Ron Van Kirk. Yes. Tony DeMarco. Yes. Debbie Tomasco. Yes. 
no other legislation this evening. We do still have two items in abeyance, Ordinance 2015-77 and Ordinance 2016-32, uh, which I did read at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, first, we'll start off with the old business. Resolution 2016-5 resolution is up for third reading and adoption, and we would like to hold this in abeyance this evening till our next meeting to be able to get more information, um, as Mrs. Pucci mentioned. But this is declaring City Council's intent to vacate a portion of Montgomery Place south of Manoa Avenue and requiring notice to be published and declaring an emergency. Move to hold in abeyance until the meeting on October 24, 2016. Second. To hold in abeyance, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Bart Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomusco? Yes. Resolution 2016-10 is on second reading this evening. It's supporting the efforts of the Utility Workers of America, the UWUA, Local 270, to reinstate First Energy's health care cost sharing for active members and retirees. Ordinance 2000. May I be recognized on this one? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I, I just I had a thought after the last council meeting that um, I just like people to consider. You know, we had a little bit of a discussion about that the impact of these situations where um, when people retire and then after they retire, changes are made either to their pension or the, their health care. And we talked a little bit about how this really is happening across many industries, whether it's the automotive, the steel. Um, this one here particularly refers to the Utility Workers of America. And I know, Mr. Van Kirk, I think you suggested trying to get First Energy and the union in here. And while that would be great, I think in reality, because this is a negotiated item, I don't think we that is going to happen. And I wonder if we should consider just broadening this and passing a resolution urging uh, our congressional leaders to try and address this problem across industries, not, not so much referring to one particular union or one particular industry. So I just thought that might be something for us to consider. And anyone that has any comments or questions, um, you know, I'd be more than happy to discuss it with them. Thank you. Yeah, just one thing. Um, I'd, I'd be in favor of, of looking at something like that. And also, um, on this resolution, I think mostly county council is on board with this from what I'm hearing. Garfield Heights is on board. I hear Lakewood's coming that way, and I believe Newburgh. So there are other cities that are coming on board around. So I believe um, he's going to have a report all on this, Chris Erickson, on the next meeting, too, Kathy. So, thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is Ordinance 2016-63. This is up for third reading adoption this evening. This is authorizing the purchase of an access control system for the natatorium and John M. Coyne Recreation Center from Integrated Precision Systems Incorporated for $17,504.54 through State of Ohio government pricing. Move to adapt. Second. To adapt. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Polinski? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. And this item was uh, budgeted in, in our budget for this year. Ordinance 2016-68 is on second reading, and as Mrs. Pucci mentioned, there has been some adjustments to this, and we will have those adjustments for the next meeting. But this is authorizing a purchase and service agreement between the City of Brooklyn and Bailey Communications Incorporated for a new voice uh, voiceover IP phone system and a full service five-year maintenance agreement in the amount of 181-506-93. But as I mentioned, that the number will come down, and we'll have those numbers for you at the next meeting. Uh, for new business this evening, we have resolution 2016-11. This is on first reading. This is authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with the District Board of Health of Cuyahoga County for health services for the year 2017 for $46,016. Next is resolution 2016-12. This is accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county fiscal officer. As Mrs. Pucci mentioned, this does not change from last year. Introduce by all suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Bart Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. To adopt by emergency, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Bart Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Next is Ordinance 2016-70. This is on first reading, the amended annual appropriations. And Mrs. Pucci outlined those totals um, 
when she gave her report for the Finance Committee, when we do adopt this for the third reading, we will read into the record all those changes. Um, Ordinance 2016-71 is on first reading. This is authorizing the mayor of the city of Brooklyn to pay an incentive to employees uh, able to opt out of medical coverage under the city's medical plan. Uh, Ordinance 2016-72 is authorizing the mayor to enter into a comprehensive consulting and brokerage services agreement with Oswald Companies. Introduce by all suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. To adapt by emergency, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. And this ordinance will be a savings to the city when it comes to these services. Uh, ordinance 2016-73 is authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Software Solutions Incorporated to provide an accounting and software system and upgrade for the finance and payroll departments. Ordinance 2016-74, amending Ordinance 2016-54, authorizing the purchase of a snow and ice removal package for the installation of a new 2017 international truck from Glen Hill Road Machinery Company for $47,713.35 through State of Ohio government pricing to an added additional part for $700. This um, ordinance was already passed and approved, it just did not contain this um, item. Introduce spouse suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. To adapt by emergency, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Ordinance 2016-75 is on first reading, authorizing the mayor to enter into a lease between the city of Brooklyn and Outfront Media Incorporated to lease the property known as Medina Freeway Property, City of Brooklyn, permanent parcel number 431-09-005 for the purpose of installing and maintaining advertising signs. Ordinance 2016-76, authorizing a change order for additional inspection and testing services to the Tiedemann Road Project, PID 95548, by Quality Control Inspection Incorporated in the amount of $85,367 and was already explained this is so that work can continue on that project. Introduce to suspend the rules. Second. To suspend the rules, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. To adapt by emergency, Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Art Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. That concludes our agenda. As was, as was already mentioned, there will be a council work session that will be held immediately, immediately following this to discuss the finances of the city. Of course, that meeting is open to the public. I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. To adjourn. Kathy Pucci? Yes. Kevin Tansky? Yes. Barb Politsky? Yes. Ryan Van Kirk? Yes. Tony DeMarco? Yes. Debbie Tomasco? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed evening.